Hey Amen. Well, it's good to be back on the radio again today. This is the Bear Trail Baptist Church broadcast. We certainly are privileged to be the pastor there by the Tim Crotts. We thank you so much for tuning in to our radio program. Sure do hope the Lord will help us to be a blessing and a help to you today. Our church is located at 100 Born Again Lane in Cana, Virginia. That is our physical address as well as our mailing address. Uh, we have Sunday school every Sunday morning at 10, our worship service at 11, our Sunday afternoon service at 2 o'clock. We do have a church website. You can visit our church website, BearTrailBaptistChurch.com. There's information regarding our church, our church location, church times, uh, how to get to heaven, amen, salvation uh, statement is on there as well. There's also a sermon audio link that you can click on to listen to sermons preached by myself and others uh, at our church. That'll be a blessing to you, I believe. Uh, we also have a Facebook page, YouTube page, and I uh, certainly do thank the Lord for all the opportunities he gives us to get out the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I'd like to make a, an announcement concerning the camp meeting. The Blue Ridge Baptist camp meeting is always the first two full weeks of the month of June, and we are right at camp meeting time. Praise the Lord for that. Uh, we always enjoy camp meeting. We're excited about this time of year. Looking forward to the camp meeting again this year, June the 3rd through the 7th is the first week of the camp meeting. Uh, Brother Leonard Fletcher, who is the pastor of the Dyson Grove Baptist Church in Mountain City, Tennessee, will be preaching for us the first week of the camp meeting, and that service time is at 7.30 each night, and hope you can come out and be with us in the camp meeting. We'll be having the camp meeting choir. Brother Tommy Nichols is our choir leader, and our song leader does a tremendous job uh, with the music, and we're looking forward to the choir singing and the camp meeting uh, singing, so hope you can come out and be with us in the camp meeting. Also, we'll have special singing each night as well. And then the second week of the camp meeting, Brother James Knox, who is the pastor of the Bible Baptist Church in Deland, Florida, he will be preaching for us in the second week of the camp meeting. Again, the service time will be at 7.30 nightly. We'll have the camp meeting choir again, as well as there will be singing groups each night, singing in the camp meeting as well. And we certainly are looking forward to this singing and this time of camp meeting again this year. Service time will again be at 7.30. The church is located at 20, or I'm sorry, not the church, the camp meeting building is located at 2049 Caldwell Drive in Mount Airy, North Carolina. I would like to say this as well. We have a youth rally each year. That is the last weekend in the month of June. So on June the 28th, which is a Friday night at 6 p.m., I will have youth rally will begin. And then again on Saturday morning, June the 29th at 10 a.m., we'll have a camp meet or youth rally again. Brother Tim Gammons will be preaching for us. Always have good activities, fun activities for the young people. And food for everyone at 10 attends the meeting after each of those services. On Saturday, there's also a public ministry opportunity as well for folks who would like to participate. And so we're excited about the camp meeting and the youth rally again this year. Well, on last week's broadcast, we began in Psalm 46. We're going to continue today in Psalm 46 with the help of the Lord. And I certainly do hope the Lord will help us and use us to be a help and a blessing today. On last week's broadcast, we talked just a little bit about the doctrinal portion of the psalm. It is a prophetical psalm. There's no doubt about that. It looks forward uh, into the millennium and the day of the Lord. And today, with the help of the Lord, we're going to just give an outline of the psalm and uh, the key verses on what, I, on what I believe are the key verses in the psalm. And we'll pay attention to that as well. And so I do hope the Lord will help us today on the psalm. Let's pray together, ask the Lord to help us, and we'll jump right in today. Father, love you. Thank you for the privilege to preach. Thank you for the privilege to be on the radio. Thank you for our Bible. Praise the Lord for the Word of God. That's our lamp and our light and our instruction and our guide. Help us, Lord, to proclaim it and help us, Lord, to live it. We pray. We'll thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. What we see in the first three verses of Psalm 46 is the assurance of of our mighty fortress. The Bible says in Psalm 46 and verse number one, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will we not fear though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, 
Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. And so what we have here is the assurance of our mighty fortress. The first thing we see is we are assured of divine refuge. God is our refuge. Now, we understand and we know that a refuge is a shelter. It is a place of protection from danger, distress, or calamity. So I'm glad that we can flee to God who is our refuge. We have the assurance of divine refuge in the Lord. Now the Bible says here in Psalm 46 in verses 7 and 11, it says the God of Jacob is our refuge. And I hope we get far enough along in the psalm today to make some very important statements about this phrase, the God of Jacob. And the God of Jacob is our refuge. What a blessing. Psalm 9, in verse number 9, the Bible says, The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in the times of trouble. I'm glad God's a refuge for the oppressed. He's a refuge in times of trouble. He is a shelter. He is a protection from danger. He's a protection from calamity. He is a protection from distress. Amen. And the Bible says this in Psalm 14, in verse number 26. I'm sorry, Proverbs 14 and verse number 26. It says, The fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and his children shall have a place of refuge. And so all we have here is in the times of trouble, there is nowhere else to run to but to the Lord. Now, in the Old Testament times, I'm sure you are familiar with the cities of refuge. And it was a place where the guilty, for the guilty to flee to for protection. I'm glad you and I, who are also guilty, praise the Lord, we are guilty, amen. We have a place of refuge to flee to, and that's the Lord. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 17, it says, We're in God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs the promise of the immutability, that's unchanging, the immutability of his counsel confirmed it with an oath, that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which endureth into it, into that within the veil, whether the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus, made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So what we see here is that Jesus is our hope. We have fled to him. We are confident that our soul is safe in him. We have, the Bible says, who have fled for refuge to lay hold on hope. That's what we've done, amen, in fleeing to the Lord. The Bible says here that our life is hid in God. And I promise you if our life hid in God, there is no place more safe than being in Him. Amen. To hide in God is to hide in His love. It's to hide in His mercy. It's to hide in His power. This means not only are we perfectly safe in, in Him, amen, but also perfectly abandonment of self to God. We're to, to His work and to His will. And I'm thankful that He is our refuge and we are assured of divine refuge with him. Second of all, we are assured of divine strength. God is our refuge and strength. Now, when I'm weak, which by the way is always, I'm glad that he is my strength. Now, the reason we have so many burdens, so many heartaches, so many troubles, so many problems is we try to carry them ourselves. Listen, you're not strong enough. I'm not strong enough, but I'm glad the Lord is strong enough, amen. And so not only is he my refuge, my, my place of safety, my place of protection, my place of shelter, he's also my strength. I can't bear these burdens alone. I, I, can't, I can't handle these trials by myself. I can't handle this distress on my own. I, I can't handle the loss in my own strength. I'm glad that I can handle those things in His strength. Now, 
I know that in this world, the Bible is very plain and we shall have tribulation. And there's no doubt about that, whether you're saved or lost. Bible, Job said, man born of woman is few days and full of trouble. Life is full of trouble. But I'm glad that I, we have someone to carry our trouble to. I'm glad we have someone to help us with our trouble. Sometimes I believe that we, we live our lives in such a distance from God or so far away from God that we try everything else in the world before we take our need to God. But friend, though that ought not be the case, say ma'am. The Bible says in Psalm 62 and verse number 7, In God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength, and my refuge is in God. Trust in Him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before Him. God is a refuge for us, Selah. And so may the Lord help you and I to pour out our heart to God. He is our refuge and our strength. So we are assured of divine refuge. We are assured of divine strength. And we're also assured of divine accessibility. Notice what the Bible says in Psalm 46, verses 1. And two, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will we not fear? He is a very help in trouble. There's no need for you and I to fear. Now, I want to say just a few things briefly about fear. First of all, fear is a sign of spiritual immaturity. Now, I, I don't, I don't see that proudly or boasting. I'm just, uh, just scripturally, I want you to understand that fear is a sign of spiritual immaturity. That, and, and, reason, and listen, because of that, you and I must learn to grow in the Lord. Now, the Bible says this in Ephesians chapter 4 and begin reading in verse number 11. It says, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, under the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Verse 15, here's our verse. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, all, all things, amen, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supply of, according to the effectual working in the measure of every good part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Now listen, Satan has done everything that he can and he continues to do everything that he can to deter God's people, to deter believers from assembling together with the saints. Amen. And even when those who do assemble, he has done everything that he can to bring in all kind of entertainment and all kind of uh, activities, anything that he can do to deter the teaching and the preaching of the Word of God. You know why? God gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. And he done that. There to be, we are to be speaking the truth in love that you may grow up into him. Amen. And the reason that Satan is doing everything he can to hinder believers from assembly, and even if he can't hinder you from assembly, he is hindering the, trying, doing everything that he can to hinder the ministers who are supposed to be ministering the word of God uh, so that you cannot grow up in maturity like the Lord wants you to. And so God has specifically gifted some men to be able to help the body and Satan wants to keep you from those men and in doing so he can cause you to be spiritually immature and cause you to fear. Now when this teaching 
and preaching and fellowship and worship of the saints is ignored. And when it's not applied regularly, amen, as the Bible says it should be, the believer becomes fearful of things that are going on in the world and of things that are going on in their life. And the reason for that is they have no confidence in the God who is their strength and their refuge. And I'm telling you, they are spiritually immature. Oh, listen, the fear of God removes fear of lesser things. God help us to grow up in Christ because this, this fear, amen, therefore will we not fear because we're trusting God who is our refuge and strength and a very present help in the time of trouble. So number one, fear is a sign of spiritual immaturity. Number two, fear is a sign of insecurity. Now, when in all when all in an all actuality we are secure in the Lord. Thank God for that. The Bible says in Romans chapter eight, verse thirty five, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long, we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor, th nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now listen, your fear of the past, your fear of the future, your fear of the present, your fear of the people, your fear of things that you cannot control, all of these things, they, they cause you to be insecure in Christ. Listen, we uh, He is our refuge. He is our strength. He is a very present help in the time of trouble. Therefore, will we not fear? Listen, that you're, you're, if, you're not, if you're not relying upon the Lord, you're fearful, and it shows that you are immature in your faith and you're insecure in your faith. Listen, I, I'm trusting God. I'm, I'm not trusting man. I'm not trusting man's ideology. I'm not trusting religion. I'm not trusting our government. I'm not trusting the leaders of our day. I'm trusting the Lord, amen. And so the fear is a sign of spiritual immaturity. It is a sign of insecurity. And number three, fear is a sign of the absence of love. Now dig in right here. Don't let me lose you. We are loved by the Lord. But your fear of man and your fear of life and your fear of everything that's going on that you can't control is an absence of love. It's a sign of the absence of love. Look what the Bible says in 1 John 4, verse number 8. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. Listen, the Lord Jesus Christ loves us. He loves you. He loves me. Our love for him will cast out fear. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. You want to test your love. You don't have to have a, uh, a meter. You don't plug yourself into something like we test our blood pressure or test our, our sugar levels or anything such as that. You, you go over those commandments. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And, and if you have a tongue that, that is bearing false witness, if you are lying and committing adultery and you have idolatry and, and you're disobedient to your parents, you're not honored. Listen, all these things going on in your life, then, then you may, you may with your mouth vocalize that you love the Lord, but your life doesn't prove that you love the Lord. And I'm just asking you to check for yourself. I'm not checking for you. You, you check up yourself, amen. And we're to love him because he first loved us. And I'll tell you this, fear is a sign of the absence of love. So we have the assurance of the mighty fortress in verses one through three. I'm trying to hurry. We have the action of the mighty fortress in verses four through nine. Now, let me read them to you. There is a river. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. 
God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved, he uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease under the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Okay, just a very, few very brief statements about these verses. Number one, God acts in the affairs of individuals and nations. I want to say that again. God acts in the affairs of nations just like he does in the affairs of individuals. Verse number six says, the heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved. And so God, uh, as individuals, God is our refuge and strength. As a nation, as a nation, God may, I'm not saying he has, but God may very well be in the process of removing his hand from us as a nation. We certainly are wicked and ungodly, and it seems like our leaders don't want anything to do with God or anything to do with the ways of God and they're, they're legalizing all kind of abominations and wickedness and ungodliness. And, and may the Lord help us to turn back to God, amen, because he is involved. He does have his hand on the nations. Number two, God acts with authority. The Bible says he uttered his voice and the earth melted. Now, we that believe in creation, and whether you don't believe in creation, doesn't matter, it's still true, amen. <laughs> Just because you don't believe it don't mean it's not true. God is the creator. He did create this world, amen. And just as he spoke this world into existence, he can utter his voice and melt the earth if he chooses to do so. And there's coming a day that he'll do that. Number three, God acts as it pleases him to act. Amen. He isn't swayed by the opinion of man. He isn't swayed by the news media. He isn't swayed by the leaders of our day. In fact, verse number eight says, Come, behold the works of the Lord. Now, I'll tell you, there's a day coming when we will witness the works of the Lord because he will one day get tired of the evil works of men and he's going to do something about it. Amen. Number four, God acts on the behalf of his people. Verse seven said, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Now, this Lord of hosts, this phrase, Lord of hosts, is in the Bible 236 times and 226 verses. And 34 of those times in the Bible, it says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Now, this phrase, the Lord of hosts, I've been told that it refers to God with his fighting clothes on. And I'll tell you this, I'm glad the Lord's on my side. Amen. I can read that to you right from the Bible as well. Number five, God acts at the proper time. There's no need for you and I to worry and fret about what's going on in the world. The Lord will take care of whatever needs to be taken care of in his own time. He's faithful. He's just. He's willing. He's able, and he is our refuge. Number six, God acts victoriously. Verse number nine, God maketh wars to cease at the end of the earth. He breaketh unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow. He cutteth the spear asunder. He burneth the chariots of fire. God is always the victor. It may seem at times like we're losing, but you can rest assured that he is the winner, amen. And you and I that are born again are on his side. So we see the actions of our mighty fortress, verses one through three. We see the action of, we see the assurance of our mighty fortress, first three verses. We see the action of our mighty fortress, verse four through nine. And then we see the acknowledgement of our mighty fortress in the last two verses. Verse 10 says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Now, I like this. Be still and know that I am God. Now, only those who have faith in God can possibly be still when circumstances seem to be out of control. In fact, the Bible says this in Psalm 4, verse number 4, stand in awe means to tremble, stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still 
Selah. Listen, many times we run ahead of God and do our own thing and we make our problem far worse than it was before or far, far worse than it has to be. I'm reminded of what Moses told the children of Israel when he was standing on the bank of the Red Sea. He said in, in verse number 13 of Exodus 14, verse 13, Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation. He's talking about the deliverance of the Lord. Can you imagine their anxiety? I, 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 can, I can imagine that whole army of Pharaoh behind me and I'm standing at the Red Sea and there's nowhere to go. And Moses said, stand still. Don't run. Don't try to find a hiding place. Don't find something you can do on your own. You stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Listen, just be still. Don't get emotional. Don't get all worked up. Don't get all excited. Just trust the Lord. He has never one time failed us, and he's not about to start now, amen. And the Lord said, I will be exalted among the heathen. There is coming a day when all the heathen will bow before him and confess with their mouth that he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. The psalmist said, I will be exalted in the earth, speaking of the Lord. And so he will one day rule and reign over all the earth for a thousand years. And during that time, you and I will be faithfully resting in him. Now, in conclusion, I believe that verses 7 and verse 11 are the key verses to this psalm. And this is what they say. Verse 11, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Now, we briefly mentioned the Lord of hosts earlier. And I mentioned about the fact that I have heard that that is a reference to God with his fighting clothes on. I, I, don't, I don't know if that's true or not. It sounds good, and it certainly seems to be so in Scripture. But I do know that the Lord, he rules the angels, he rules the stars, he rules the elements and all the hosts of heaven, and the heavens of heaven are under his sway, the Bible says. And so the armies of the world, they, uh, though they know it not, they are made to be submissive to his will. He is definitely the Lord of hosts. Now, this phrase, the God of Jacob is our refuge. Now, have you ever wondered why the Bible says the God of Jacob? Now, you and I, we know that this psalm is speaking about a future kingdom of our Lord. We also know that there are some verses in the psalm that reference the time of Jacob's troubles. I, I think it goes back and forth between the tribulation and the millennium. And so uh, we know that Jacob's name was changed to Israel. And here Israel is being delivered from great tribulation into the millennial kingdom. This could be why. And, and if it is, I'll tell you that. I want to say this about if, if that's the case. And I believe it is. What a refuge and what a strength, amen, to be delivered from the time of Jacob's trouble into the millennial kingdom. Now, Jacob was given a covenant with God that will not be fulfilled until the millennium. The Bible says in Genesis 28 and verse 13, it says, And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father and the God of Isaac. The land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth. And thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And so this could be why the psalmist here refers to him as the God of Jacob. Now, I really don't have time today. In fact, I am just pretty much out of time. And I don't know if there's enough material there to do an entire another broadcast on the subject. But there are several reasons I believe God refers to himself many times in Scripture as the God of Jacob. And it's, it's quite a study, but I don't know if I could fill up an entire broadcast with the information. But anyway, thank you so much for tuning in to the Bear Trail Baptist Church broadcast. We thank you so much for listening on a weekly basis. It is a tremendous blessing to me. So until we meet again next time at the same place, goodbye and God bless you is our prayer. 
Thank you so much for liking or for watching and listening on social media. Please like and share the broadcast to help us to reach as many folks as possible. We certainly would appreciate that. Goodbye and God bless you is our prayer.